Engineers in Baltimore have been trying to solve a 100,000 ton problem. The Francis Scott Key Bridge has, for about seven weeks now, been a mess of twisted steel wrapped around a cargo ship that crashed into it, trapping it in place. Until, that is, they did this. That's called explosive cutting. It is a dangerous, high-wire act of structural engineering that requires careful planning, an immense amount of knowledge, and every precision move, every cut, must happen simultaneously. Safety in this operation is our top priority. So how do you blow up a bridge safely and without further damaging the ship trapped underneath? The root problem here is that when the Dali cargo ship issued a mayday call that it had lost power and within moments slammed into one of the bridge's supports, causing it to collapse within seconds, two things happened. First, it jammed a really key waterway. It's, it's a significant blow not only to Maryland, uh, but also you're talking about the region and the nation when you consider uh, the amount, how this serves as a major a core artery for you know, two thirds of the country receives its goods from the port of Baltimore. This channel connecting Baltimore to Chesapeake Bay, which ultimately connects the Eastern United States to the Atlantic Ocean, is responsible for nearly 200 million US dollars of economic output daily, according to the governor. But as long as there's debris in the water and that big ship in the way, you get a traffic jam. So they needed to tug the ship out. But the second thing that happened when that bridge collapsed was that it landed on top of the Dali cargo ship. This is an example of just a piece, what we see in this picture here, of just a piece of the truss that still needs to be removed in order for the Dali to be refloated so we can then continue the process of fully opening up the federal channel. All that weight, thousands of tons, squeezed the Dali into the earth underwater. So if you want to free the ship, you have to remove the bridge. The thing to remember here is that engineers were juggling several balls at once here. Because first of all, you can't just blow everything up. The Dali was carrying 764 tons of hazardous materials. Roughly a third of that cargo was damaged. And you don't want that leaching into the water. There are also people still on board that ship. Yeah, the crew never left, even almost two months now after the crash. They're staying on board because they're part of the ship. Uh, they are necessary to keep the ship safe and, and operational. They're also not allowed to leave, by the way, not until the investigation's done. So any plan to refloat the Dali had to be carried out in a way that didn't get the crew killed. Because even if you're careful, like if you analyze the whole thing and then just start slicing off small pieces of the bridge, like trimming branches off a tree, you're still dynamically changing the structural integrity of the bridge in real time with every cut. With the tension on the steel so high, it's exceedingly difficult to protect the ship, the crew, and the engineers doing the cutting all at once. So this was the plan. When you say blowing up the bridge, that in of itself is, is a misconception. We're calling it precision cutting to help set expectations. It's not what you envision in Hollywood, a big fireball. When we say precision cutting, it is exactly that. This is an animation from the Key Bridge Response Unified Command, the joint government team tasked with making the precision cuts. First, they look at the whole bridge and figure out exactly which cuts they need to make. Then they make these tiny, surgically precise incisions into the steel. This video makes it look like they're cutting these giant holes, but these cuts are millimeters across. Once they've made the cuts, they insert explosive charges and seal them up, just uh, an adhesive. You can think of it like industrial strength duct tape. What you end up with is a whole series of tiny bombs that can all be triggered to explode simultaneously. The steel pieces all come apart at once, and the force of the explosion thrusts them away from the dolly. It's actually the safest and most efficient way to achieve this number of cuts and then have that wreckage fall out and away from the vessel. Which brings us to now.
the crew on board the ship were a key part of staying on top of any problems. If something were to happen, they are the, in the best place to actually fight or fire on board the ship because they're familiar with it. They're familiar with all of their safety equipment. They are the best responders on board the ship themselves. Salvage equipment was already in position when the charges went off. Some debris they can lift out with a grabber arm. Other larger pieces can still be cut while they're in the water into smaller pieces and then removed. The first priority is, again, uh, clearing all the debris from the deep draft channel. That's so they can reopen the channel to ship traffic. Then, with the heavy load lifted off the dally, it can eventually be refloated, likely in a couple of days from now, and taken out of the channel for repairs, to get the crew out, and, to be honest, to carry out an investigation. We know that, that those who need to be held responsible for, for this tragedy will be held responsible. The speculation in insurance circles is that this may well prove to be one of the most expensive maritime disasters in American history. The bridge itself also needs to be rebuilt. And getting to the bottom of what really happened and whether there's a danger of it happening again somewhere else, right? I mean, how many bridges out there could collapse due to a single point of failure? These are the long-term questions that can be asked now that the most pressing concern is out of the way.